TV again, I'm on a work call. So the, a lot of adjustments in terms of students' social emotional development, at the, especially at those primary ages, has been a little stunted in a way. The kind of common theme we have been seeing amongst our educators um, and our students is that they seem to be a little bit stuck back based upon where they, where they say right there. Now, the good news is, will they catch up? Absolutely. But right now, the beginning is, is that this is kind of an observation that everybody's been making, and it's, it's causing a lot of stress and anxiety, okay? But it's to be expected because of what has happened. So that recovery time may take a little bit of time, but it's just a very poignant kind of graphic right there to really kind of set the tone for like what the expectations are here for social emotional learning. So what is it, social emotional learning? So the big thing that I have to kind of do is this campaign about what social emotional learning is versus what therapeutic or traumatic based you know, um, activities or prevention is. So social emotional learning, obviously you see the definition right there. It's talking about developing healthy identities, managing your emotions, achieving personal and collective goals, feeling and showing empathy for others, establishing and maintaining supportive relationships and making responsible and caring decisions. So that is the definition of social emotional learning. So when we talk about that, we talk about that more in a tier one aspect which means that everybody is getting this type of knowledge. Um, the best way also to describe this is that it is embedded within what we do. So there is a time and place for push-ins, there's a time and place for where we say this is a very specific direct lesson on managing your emotions, and there's other times where we say this is just embedded within the curriculum of what we normally do academically. And that is gold when it comes to SEL in our curriculum, what we do here every day. So this right here is the five competencies of SEL. So that definition was a mouthful, right? A lot of stuff going on and what you know, educators might say, parents might say about my kid has either anxiety, they have this issue, that issue. Teachers might say these kids have this issue. They use a lot of words, okay? What this does is it breaks it down. So every time when a teacher says, I feel like these students are blank, blah, 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 I say it sounds to me like they have issues with self-management. What that does is it compartmentalizes it and it makes it easier to kind of manage in your head and to kind of strategize about how we can kind of resolve it. In a survey that I sent out to the staff earlier this school year, I had a question that asked these five competencies, but I didn't say self-management, responsible decision-making. I used, you know, within the question, check all that apply, which do you feel they need the most help with? And one of them was like impulse control, stress management, anxiety, coping, right? And that was off the charts. That was self-management. So then I was able to go back and point that out, that that was the competency where we felt our students needed the most help. Therefore, we can target our SEL instruction from there. This right here is just another wheel, but it kind of breaks it down a little easier. Obviously, in the handouts that um, the Board of Education has, it has breakdown of what those five competencies are. But this kind of breaks it down. So this kind of like is the wheel that we would use for elementary schools um, or just a breakdown for maybe for parents. You know, just, to, just as, as a way to just say, okay, makes sense. I get, I get what that competency is about. And that is what we would tackle within our SEL curriculum here. So that's just an example of what it looks like. So that's the common language that we are getting on, and we're getting better and better every day about doing. So what we introduced for this year is uh, district-wide themes. Um, again, I think with everything going on, it was like, almost like the, the KISS method, which is keep it simple, stupid. Let's make sure that we have one aspect, and as you see from your handouts there too, it fits among the five competencies. So it may be related to self-management, responsible decision-making, social awareness, so on and so forth. But each of these themes, we told our staff, dive deep into it and just be good at just that theme. Students, as they're walking through a schedule, they're kind of going to be like, why do we keep talking about this resilience thing, you know, so on and so forth. That's the point, because they, we want to make sure that we're doing a deep dive with that. We obviously didn't pick these out of nowhere. So some of them align with national campaigns for the month. Coping and resiliency was really our way to really say, well, since we're back, we are gonna have some challenges and some difficulties. Instead of taking away the discomfort and the difficulties, we're gonna have you guys work through them head on because that's a life skill. So we worked a lot in this past month of October that I'll be able to kind of demonstrate to you later on in this presentation. For September, it was connecting and cultivating relationships. That was our way of welcoming everybody back and doing a deeper dive to get to know people. So that's what we spent a lot of time doing for the month of September. And obviously for November, um, we have gratitude, um, which obviously comes within the season of Thanksgiving. We have a lot of exciting stuff um, planned for that. Some of it I can't tell you guys because they're surprises. 
Um, but at the same time, we do have some really exciting um, things happening there. And as you can see, for December, empathy or perspective, putting yourself in someone else's shoes, um, you know, considering those who are less fortunate. For January, goal setting. Obviously, it's a new year. Uh, it's a new, you know, it's a, it's a way to turn the page on the year. And we have, obviously, leadership within that month as well. For February, it's kindness. Obviously, it kind of fits right along with, you know, Valentine's Day and love and everything. March is physical wellness as the, year, as the weather warms up and, you know, we're able to get more physically active. We're coming out of the doldrums of winter. Um, April, diversity and respect. And that diversity could mean anything related to, um, you know, race. It also can mean diversity amongst ability levels. So there are students who are do unified sports. We have a unified sports team. So it means also diversity in terms of, like, what our abilities are as well. Um, so that is a national campaign for the month of April as well. May is Mental Health Awareness Month nationally. Uh, so what we are going to do there is almost have a wrap-up of the entire year. And then June would be reflection. How did this year go for you? What, what were some things you need to work on? What were some things that went well? What were some things that didn't go well? And what do you hope to work on? So that is what we're going to do K through 12, obviously at developmentally appropriate levels. So district-wide efforts that we've had. So I'm not going to read through every single one. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory. I just want to highlight a few of them. We just obviously went over the monthly themes. Um, data collection of staff and student surveys will be ongoing. I love data because I can kind of target. I can also know where did we miss the mark and where did we really, really do well. So that continues. The SEL office hours, um, the one school I still have to go to is Cornwall Elementary. That's tomorrow. What I do, do with this SEL office hours is I went to every building and I brought a Keurig coffee machine. And I said, meet me between this time and this time. Let's talk SEL. And the conversations I had with our staff members have been phenomenal. They have said, hey, I just need a little help with this, or can you explain to me like, what you mean by blank? And we've had some really good discussions, and it was a thing that I was going to kind of do once and just to say, okay, this is what you know, I think uh, you know, the pulse is. But they went so well that I, I, just, I think I'm going to kind of keep it up and keep that going on because I think generating that conversation helps tremendously both ways, uh, for, for in terms of for me, for initiatives, but also for the, um, our staff that says, you know what, we've been heard, it's great, and like, we're, we're like, targeted here, so it's kind of a nice thing. Um, we had a phenomenal, phenomenal speaker, Scarlett Lewis, uh, today at our uh, professional development conference day for our staff. Um, Scarlett Lewis, for those of you that don't know, was one of the mothers um, uh, in the Sandy Hook tragedy. Her son, uh, Jesse Lewis, was you know, among the 19 that were killed um, during that tragedy. So she talked to our staff about new perspective um, and also about their own wellness and about the biology of stress and anxiety and that your choices matter. You know, there's a, there's a space between, she said, like a stimulus and a response. And you have the opportunity to make a choice, whether or not that choice is ready, an angry thought or an angry choice, or is it a positive one? Um, so it kind of just put things in perspective, because I think a lot of staff that came up to me said, you know, if she can have a positive outlook, how could we all not? You know what I mean? So I, I thought that was very, uh, you know, moving for everybody staff-wise. It put a new perspective on the challenges that we face this year. Um, SEL teams are kind of upcoming. That's kind of like our ground level teams that we're going to have individually for buildings. Um, we all have staff professional development, focus on staff wellness that's ongoing as well, the different curriculums. Uh, one thing I'm very excited about a potential opportunity for is a mental health counselor through the Orange County Department of Health. Um, we just have to get a memorandum, memorandum of understanding. We house them in our district. They bill through insurance. So it's almost like having an in-house clinician. Um, so for those families that have transportation issues, they may not be able to get their kid to appointments, we would have someone kind of in-house. So we just have to get through a little red tape with that, um, but that, hopefully we're, we're there with that. Um, obviously, our social workers support staff that connect families with basic needs such as food and clothing, that is ongoing. That is still going on, you know, believe it or not. So yes, I think that people kind of think, well, we're kind of out of it, but we're still kind of in it. We're still on that tail you know, end of it, too. So there are definitely some st families still struggling. So. Um, elementary level examples right here. Um, one of them is like an affirmation station, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, mindfulness and breathing and coping is huge. Um, so again, it happens at different, uh, different types uh, with this level, but they, sometimes they do announcements over the PA uh, system, sometimes they do class push-ins, um, and they just work on coping strategies with our little, little ones. And again, developmentally appropriate, talking to them about you know, when you are feeling a certain way, what is one way to manage your emotions? Getting back again to that self-management portion. Um, they do kindness trees, character trees. Uh, they do staff highlights, DASA lessons, random acts of kindness. Um, crisis counseling still is ongoing, um, as we know. 
and then support staff push-ins are happening you know, at every uh, opportunity they can get. And again, the teachers with uh, the staff, I, sh I should say, with the SEL and the curriculum is just going better and better and better. I mean, they already do a great job loving on our kids, and this is just an opportunity for them to just kind of like do a more targeted approach as it relates to those five competencies I just showed you. As you can see right here on the left, this is a breathing exercise that uh, one of our support staff worked with our class uh, team member. And basically the student just traces where it says breathe in and they breathe in and they breathe out right when they go to the next one. And obviously it fit with Halloween, so the kids loved it. You know, so they did an activity and they just told them like, just do a breathing web you know, at home every time you're feeling stressed. On the right, you see a coping checklist. What helps me? So the students were able to check stuff. And if they didn't understand something, they said, what's that? And they had a conversation about what it is and they taught them how there were other ways that they can cope when they are feeling sad, they're feeling mad. Um, about things. So just another kind of, you know, just strategies that they, you know, did, you know, within the classrooms. On the left right here, you see there's an affirmation station. I believe this is Miss Creasy uh, here at Lee Road. Um, students walk up to the mirror. There's different sayings in there. They say, say one thing positive before you start your day. So they look in the mirror and they say, you're kind or you're awesome. Or if you're my son, he says something off the charts on there. And he said, you know, they're like, okay, good, go, you know. But at the same time, um, it starts their day on a positive note. And it's research-based that they just say something positive about their day and they get going. On the right there, that's a, a graphic at Willow. That was students connecting, telling them about themselves and then showing their faces, you know what I mean? So they can really see behind the mask. Um, so it was just a really nice thing. I just thought, I was like, that's a great thing to capture, okay? Middle school examples. So you have counselors pushing in uh, to do the transition, the intro to the school counselor. They did push-ins on resilience and coping, just very, very targeted lessons for all grades, five through eight. Um, they had to have an assembly on good behavior. <laughs> you remember the first graphic about where, which grade level was their last normal school year, right? The, what we've been seeing is that there's that immaturity. Um, and again, it's coming out, you know what I mean? But it, the beginning of the school year brought a lot of issues regarding to that. So they had assemblies on good behavior. The counselors pushed into support and say, this is why, and this is what we need to do. So they're getting it, um, like I said, it, but it's, it is a result of what has happened. So. School spirit committees, they have the weekly or monthly activities which uh, correspond with the SEL themes. They have a star reward system for staff, staff snack days, which they were not able to do. Now staff snack days in the middle school are like legendary. On paydays, they all can bring in snacks and they all have a great time and they, they have said, this is just something we missed terribly. So to bring it back brings up that morale, so it's a really nice thing. Striving for excellence awards, again, crisis counseling, and then the student at risk data meetings, which happens actually K through 12. Um, so what we do is we look at data about who was disconnected last year and are they still on that train uh, and then to put in interventions in place. This right here is a resiliency board. So it's basically out in the hallway in the middle school. So again, whatever theme of the month go, you know, that board will change um, so students can kind of view right there. This next one is in uh, Ms. Trieste's office uh, as a, one of the school counselors in the middle school. Um, one, of the, uh, one of them that I want to point out at the very top right, which you guys can't see, it says that uh, failure is a bruise, not a tattoo, um, which I thought was a really, really, you know, resounding thing for the st students to read and to know and to understand that it's okay to fail. Uh, you just gotta pick yourself up and it'll get better and you will move on, so. So on the left-hand side, you, you see Ms. Palumbo, she's doing her Striving for Excellence Awards, uh, rewarding positive behavior within the building. And on the right, something I wanna point out, this is Ms. Uh, Dinicenzo, I'm gonna screw up her name. Uh, she's an English teacher at the middle school and it says here that they practice their public speaking skills while sharing out some really great characteristics about themselves during an English lesson. That is the SEL we are looking towards and to move towards. It's not SEL that's like, okay kids, we're gonna stop what we're doing academically and we're gonna learn about feelings. It's about embedding it within the curriculum. So they did public speaking, they were learning about that literature, but they also talked about great characteristics about themselves within that lesson. That is the money right there. This is what we want to move towards. High school examples. So you have counselor push-ins for freshmen. You had the counselor push-ins to introduce themselves to students. They did that as a group. They thought it was a much better result, and they were right. They, they got feedback from students. They said it was great having all of the support staff there within our class. Uh, they were able to ask good questions. Um, for breaking the cycle assembly, I'll get to in a little bit. Teen mental health first aid, I was super excited about that. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Morgan's message. So the nice thing about high school SEL is this. If you allow them to be uh, agents and advocates and allow them choice with SEL, it flies because they're high school students.
they have some advocacy, they have that ability to verbalize, they have that ability to say, this is lame, I don't like this, or this is awesome, we love this. Morgan's message is one of those things. We had a, a student athlete, she said, listen, I found out about this program, she's a student athlete at Cornwall, and what she said was, the whole point of Morgan's message is to equate physical wellness with mental, mental wellness. So she has run a lot of these groups where she basically says, we have all these activities, these ideas about how we're getting the stigma of mental health and we're erasing it from students. They're doing different activities throughout the year to promote mental health. Um, so it starts with student athletes, but it melts throughout the entire building. Um, so I'm very, very proud of our students because they are picking this up, this mental health stuff. They're not shying away from it and they're saying it's important. Um, so that's one of those organizations right there. Um, counselors are getting out and about. They're getting into the hallway a little bit more, more FaceTime, I think that's kind of key. Uh, we did a staff uh, appreciation breakfast. Senior night invites I'll get into in a little bit. The staff appreciation breakfast is always appreciated because it's food, so it's awesome. So, And then we had student feedback forums. So once a month, we meet with their students during lunch periods in the auditorium and we just say, tell us what's going on. What's going well, what's not going well? And the students come in and they appreciate it so much just to be able to chat and just to have conversation. Again, it's part of that climate that we wanna create, that positive climate, because we want them to say, hey, I'm, we're heard here, and they're listening to us. New student welcome packet, it got, it, we took a deeper dive with the new student welcome packet. What are your interests, what are you into? Tell us a little bit more about your family, your background, everything like that, so we have more information on new students here. Dragon Breakfast, we bring back recognition of positive students and nominations. Freshman orientation survey, what we do is we go through all of our, after freshman orientation, we say, Tell us about what you know here, what do you not know, so on and so forth. And what we do is we revisit that. One of the questions we asked on the freshman survey is, do you have a trusted adult here in the building? Now, people always say, well, it's freshmen. How do they have a trusted adult? Well, some of them have coaches, some of them have whatever. But our job when we revisit it is to ask them that same question and see, did it move? So obviously for us, we're looking for 95%, okay? If it's not 95% for me, then we failed then we need to do something else. And we also then can target and see who answered no after a full year of school. And we can really connect with those kids. So that is why we use the data here. Um, let's see, senior class visits. We have LGBTQ education for staff, student at risk data meetings, which I talked about before, peer mentors, freshman orientation. Um, so that is where they partner and they can meet up with our, you know, our freshmen and make sure that everything's doing okay. We have a self-care club. Um, so that's basically for students who are saying like, hey, mental health is important to me. What are things that I can do? So that is, a, as a, again, student-run advocacy group. We have a grief group for students who have experienced loss. Um, you know, we do that once a month with our students, and it's, it's going great. It's going phenomenal. And our community service is SEL. Um, as you saw from that wheel and as you see in your handout, one of the outside ring talks about aligned community partnerships. The community service initiative we have here does that for us. There are so many students that come back after an experience and say, man, I didn't know we didn't have X, or I didn't know that we needed so much help with blank. And so it puts a new perspective you know, for them. So it's definitely like one of those things that it definitely helps tremendously. So on the left-hand side, this is just um, me at the class meetings. Basically what I did was I gave uh, one student, you know, I, you know, I feel bad for him, I, I didn't tell him what I was gonna do. I just said, come up here, I need a volunteer. And then I handed him 10 balloons and I said, keep them in the air for 30 seconds. And he was like, that's impossible. <laughs> so as you can see on the left, he, he had a good go at it. And then what I said was invite two friends up and they do the same thing. Well, they did it for a little bit, but it wasn't that bad. And then I said, and now you can use anybody in the auditorium. And it was their entire class. And what I, the whole point of it was stick together. If you work together as partners, if you take care of each other, anything is impossible. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's possible. To, I'm sorry, anything is possible. So basically, don't take on a lot of the stressors in your life by yourself. Get help, get people around you. You know, you have people that can support you. On the right-hand side, this is just a math lesson from, again, Mr. Hines. Again, this is where I'm talking about where it's embedded. He did an activity where they, this, he had students in groups. They had to make as many squares as possible, and then they had to work through and really say, like, wait a minute, I don't, th I don't think this is enough. He was like, nope, there's more. Keep going, keep going. And they had to work as group. And that, again, is SEL. It's just that people don't realize they're doing it already. They don't realize it, but now it's just more poignant and more targeted, okay? This is uh, in art class, there's positive mantras in the high school, they just, they, the art class has basically taken it upon themselves to say, we're gonna follow whatever the SEL theme is and we're gonna do artistic you know, based things and we're gonna put them up on the walls. So nice thing right there. 
This right here is our teen mental health first aid. So very proud of this. This is through the Maya Gold Foundation. What we did was we essentially piloted it with our personal wellness class at the high school. What teen mental health first aid is, is that it's intensive three training sessions for these groups, two hour training sessions. Um, what they do is they talk about um, the signs and symptoms of mental health crises as it relates to potential suicide or substance abuse. It then allows students to have action and then move them towards connecting that student in crisis with an adult who can help. So it's not their weight of the world on their shoulders that they have to solve all these problems. It's more awareness and that they can kind of connect all these students to who they need to go to. So this was a snapshot of some of the trainings that happened in the library. We trained approximately 50 students that are now new eyes and ears amongst our hallways that can manage and see uh, crises as they kind of form and, and, and get the proper help. So this is just a little video clip of uh, students' reaction to uh, the, the training in the program. Um, hi, I'm Emma. I'm a senior from Cornwall Central High School. Um, I think this is a really special program just because it teaches us not only about the various mental health challenges that teens are facing every day, but also how to take action in helping teens face these mental health challenges. So it teaches us how to um, like look for the warning signs and then um, be able to listen to them and find the professional help that they need to help them face um, a mental health challenge or crisis. So, I mean, the, the overwhelming response we had from our students with that, it was extremely positive. It was a great thing. Um, the students were on fire. They were kind of saying, can we expand this? Can we do more? And I was like, absolutely. You know, that's what I was waiting to hear. Um, so we have some ideas about how we can kind of expand it to a lot of more of our students. But uh, the students that did participate in it really, really did enjoy the program. So. Oh, no, no, that's, you can go to the next one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you can just. Um, hi. I there you go. So this right here was the, our Breaking the Cycle assembly. The, we had it on October 12th. Uh, Breaking the Cycle is an organization that comes in. Again, they talk about um, their stories. Uh, the people on the right is Anne-Marie and Pat DeLiso. They lost their son uh, sophomore year, uh, in his sophomore year of high school, uh, you know, took his own life. So they talked about that story with our students. Um, on the left there, I believe, is uh, Charles Williams. He's a retired Cornwall and Hudson police chief. He talked about you know, growing up in an alcoholic you know, family. Um, very, very raw for a lot of our students. Um, but the message was very, very clear to them that you can get support. You know, do not go at it alone. And so their stories were very, very moving. Um, but at the same time, the students' responses to it were extremely, extremely positive. For the students who we felt like it missed the mark, we gave a survey afterwards. And some students said, you know, hey, I just, just felt like this was like too much or so on and so forth. And I called down every single student that had um, negative feedback. And I said, I'm not keep calling you down to um, challenge you or change your mind. I'm just calling you down to let you know that I'm acknowledging that you might have missed the mark with you. But I want to make sure that you know, like, hey, this is what we want to do, and this is how maybe we can improve in the future. Um, great positive conversation. I think that the students appreciated just hearing, you know, or just being acknowledged. But for the most part, again, extremely, extremely positive um, results from this, this assembly. So the next slide um, is just a couple of the comments. And I know it might be a little hard to see. Um, but one of them says, I genuinely feel like this is one of the best assemblies we had in high school. The suicide message was very strong and impactful. I really feel like they could have saved so many lives with their story. Um, one other one that I really stood out to me was, um, this is a very good thing I've not had at any other school since I move around a lot because of the military. I've seen many schools, and this was such a good thing for people to be aware of since these are some kids, or there are some kids who are really living with depression and thoughts of suicide daily. Also, many people live with anger and hatred every day against parents, friends, siblings, but having this assembly also touched on a lot of forgiveness. That was an added bonus in my opinion. So. Again, just really, really nice feedback, and again, from our high school students who can verbalize and speak um, about it. So it was just nice to hear it put some perspective there. Now, this is kind of where I'm gonna kind of close. So um, a lot of the SEL that we do here, um, we wanna do in an interconnected manner uh, with our community. Um, the one thing is because how everything seems so challenging and maybe so, so bad, like you know that first graphic I showed, man, there's so many challenges, so many stresses. The one thing I wanna say is this, though. This student right here is a varsity football player. He's gone through our system here at Cornwall. Our staff, before I got here, <laughs> before any SEL initiatives and buzzwords, 
loved on our kids so much and taught them so much of the, of the right thing that we asked our seniors for senior night for the fall, invite a staff member that has made an impact on you, that you appreciate, that you just want to say thank you to. And every single one of them was like, absolutely. I got it. I know who. So this is uh, Will McKeon. He invited uh, Jackie Perry to the game. Um, so as you can see there, she, wrote, she posted this on social media. I, I asked her, if, do I have permission to share this? And she was like, absolutely. But, you know, as you can read right there, you know, how much it made a difference for her. Um, and she wrote at the very end, tonight was one of the highlights of my teaching career. This is SEL in action for how it happens for youth and then how we interconnect it back to our staff to show that gratitude, to show that compassion. And it's just that cycle that just keeps on going here in Cornwall. And this is kind of an example of what the output is. And also the example of even though this student also went through a, the pandemic as well, um, still knows the core values of what's right. And, you know, again, how to kind of keep that message going about doing the right thing. So it was just a beautiful thing to see. And this is stuff that we want to continue. Um, so like I said, we have some surprises. Can't tell you yet. But we do have some things that I think are going to make our community very proud, our teachers, our staff members very proud, and our students also very proud to be here at Cornwall. So, so again, and, and for me, um, I don't rest. I don't care if our results of every kid here was like my happiness level is 1,000. I don't care. The work continues. So, and I know that it will. Um, and I honestly think that uh, for me, um, caring for our students is obviously a number one. Caring for our staff is obviously a number one as well. It's like equal because once everybody feels cared for, loved, and compa you know, compassionate, um, that's where we're in a good spot. So, um, so again, as November kicks off our district-wide theme of gratitude, thank you all for allowing me to show this because, like I said, I wish I could be here for another hour and a half, <laughs> so I apologize for going a little long, but at the same time, it's such a great place that it's easy um, to do a presentation like this. So I thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Joe, if anyone um, on the board has questions. Yes. I'll start. Yes. <laughs> Um, you mentioned the mental health counselor. Yes. Is that at the request, um, once that's all in place, will that be at the request of the family? How is that? Do you have a yeah. plan of how that might work? So, so they would bill through insurance. It would kind of be just like an outside clinician. Mm -hmm. We would just house them. Okay. Um, so if the student is really in a kind of crisis where they really do need you know, therapy at a higher level, mm -hmm. where this would be a licensed mental health clinician, we could refer you know, in-house, and this could be, again, it could be high school, middle school, or elementary school. They would be housed in one of our buildings, so it's kind of convenient for our families to utilize. Um, but again, there just has to be a memor memorandum of understanding, you know, signed and agreed upon, and, you know, we would obviously have to find the space, which we're willing to do, yeah. you know, because, again, it's, I think it's an important initiative, so. Yep. It's very good, thank you. Yep, you got it. Anyone have any questions for, for Joe? I just wanted to, as a, um first-hand account of full disclosure Joe's son and my daughter are in the same <laughs> kindergarten class yes. so the effort but it, I was all ready to bring up the affirmation station and then you brought it up so they I mean as Joe described like they go in front of a mirror they say something positive about themselves Miss Creasy sent a, a video that at least I saw a video so I'm assuming somebody sent it yes my wife shows me mm -hmm. and it was such a powerful thing to witness just all the kids going up one after another I mean, if you said, I mean, this is SEL in action. It was, you don't, as a parent, you don't know what goes on in school. You know, certainly your five-year-old is going to tell you a very limited window of what they did that day. Mm -hmm. So seeing that was, uh, as a parent, just very gratifying to, to know. And, and just, I mean, everything that you showed, the presentation was, was very powerful. I can only imagine these events are extremely powerful. And for a 17-year-old, 18-year-old to have a chance to express their gratitude to somebody in their life i mean most kids don't get around to doing that maybe until their late 20s and they think oh if i just had that one chance so being able to do that now i think is an extraordinary thing to yeah. allow them to do absolutely yep hmm? talking to the mic <laughs> i don't <laughs> Okay, first of all, I'm curious as to some of our children that are um, classified 504s and classified students. Um, I would imagine, especially some who are, are pull-ins or push-ins and things like that, 
Um, do, have we done any special, have you done any kind of special monitoring to see, or is this just done in the general framework of the entire school? It's everyone. Yeah, so it's, it's not that anybody gets a separation of it. Again, if it, it's, let's just say it is a uh, implicit lesson, sometimes there's modifications to it. Sometimes students, um, obviously emotional levels are different, you know, even within a grade level. So the teachers or whoever, the support staff members will modify, you know, if it is a push-in lesson or anything like that. But again, the message is still the same, you know, in terms of like, you know, the emotional development, everything like that. So there are students, I mean, let, make no mistake, that struggle you know, maybe with relationships and, and developing and maintaining relationships. When we talk about LCL, we talk about it again as like a, as a whole, that we it is tier one, everybody's getting it. As we get to tier two and tier three, that might be where it might be it's a small group where they say, okay, we're going to get together and we're going to kind of work on, okay, what would you say? I would say, hey, my name is, you know, so on and so forth. And then would you allow the other person to talk and so on and so forth. So um, part of the, um, I'll give an example. Um, a science teacher, you know, came up to me and said, I don't know, how do I do SEL in science? And you know, I had to think about it. And I said, well, you have lab groups. And they said, yes. And I said, create a circle, put everybody's name around that circle. As they're interacting, draw where the conversation's going. And at the end, who is out? And then offer to them and say, you know, I noticed that you and you didn't contribute. Do you have anything to contribute or are you good? Some people will say, I'm good. Right? I'm, no, I'm, yeah, I'm good. But someone that says, yeah, they were just talking too much, you know, and it's usually like boys, and it's like their girl who knows the science answer, you know, and mm -hmm. says, you know, I knew the answer, just I wasn't allowed to speak. That's SEL. So when I say that, that's in relation to where you might have a tier two because maybe students might be struggling. So you kind of get them in together and you kind of say, you know, I noticed that three of you were talking, but the two of you didn't really contribute, you know, so do you want to contribute? Do you want to, okay, so if you wanted to contribute, what are, what's something you could say? you know, as a socially acceptable thing and so on and so forth. So there are groups like that. There are, there are smaller level, you know, things that we would do. That, that Those are higher level interventions if we needed to do that. So um, just to take it a step further, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I bet you're the one with the skeleton on your car. Um, I, I think what I'm trying to say, especially with some of... Um, are more fragile students to begin with. If you start out with a more fragile student or a child that's needier, um, a, a child that has a classification or a committee, um, do we have something in place? If, if let's say you start out with a child who's disorganized to begin with, I mean that's part of their that's part of their um, presenting issue. And now with COVID, it's really left them isolated and, and I could see where this could entire circle could be applied to some students sure yeah I, I don't I don't think that um, I think if you're talking about formalized you know like possibly like an IEP or plan no no, no I don't okay. mean formalized no, okay just what you have you have we identified that yet it's only November yes absolutely yes so there are students who you know if we identify as again like you know whether maybe a possibly a special education of 504 or just in general like who may be just struggling in general, mm -hmm. absolutely. Those are some of the areas where, again, if we're on that common language, if we're talking to the staff member, we can say, out of these areas, where do you feel like they are struggling the most? You know what I mean? They might say responsible decision making. Like, hey, they're, they're a nice kid, this, that, the other thing, but they just don't make the right decisions when it comes to certain things. So they might have some self-management issues, so on and so forth, but that's, we can definitely apply that. But that's the language that we, as a group and as a district, have to just work more towards, again, saying that. Because sometimes someone will say someone is nudgy. What does that mean? <laughs> you know, it's like okay, give, give me a little bit more specific, it means it's and then my grandchild. yeah, and then yeah, right. Said, well, my son. Uh, but again, we can get more. We, we can get deeper, but we can also compartmentalize it and organize it. And I think that will help people say, okay, it's this category. You know I think I mean? that's so, what yes. makes this so uh, nuanced. Is so much of it is individualized. So that's where a lot of our attention was last year on those students who were most fragile and most impacted by. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID, so that's where that, that tier three was last year. Uh, what Joe's work has shifted to this year is we wish we could have done more of the tier one where we couldn't have assemblies last year. So something as simple as mm -hmm. choose love assembly, we, we just couldn't do last year. So, um, and those are the, um, how do we integrate it into everyday lessons and things of that nature. Now we have all of our kids in versus trying to connect through a screen. Uh, so those are 
uh, some of the nuances of last year um, switching into this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. No I, your excitement is palpable. Oh, thank and, you. And it's <laughs> contagious. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say one thing when you were talking about Mrs. Dennis Cizenzo's and uh, the class, we were actually there. The visitation committee was actually there for that um, class, that lesson, and we were only there for 10 minutes, but to be able to witness that and see these, these sixth graders, are they sixth graders? To see these sixth graders, and they were talking about the book that they were reading, but they were up there and they were saying positive things about themselves and the, the rest of the class was giving them affirmations, you know, like they were all, and they were adding things too, you know, so right. in a lesson to think that that's, and not make it, now we will talk about, right. you know, it was just part right. of the daily yep. process. The other thing that I thought was great, um, my son graduated in 2020 by the skin of his teeth, uh, thanks to the pandemic and the fact that he was now working from home and is very disorganized and very last minute. I told him, you just gotta, you just gotta make it through, pal. You just have to graduate. Um, one of the best things, and he talks about it still, um, was the parade that they did in 2020. Were you here then? Yes. Okay. Um, the parade that they had for the seniors. And the seniors, you know, pandemic, what have you, but the seniors got, they felt so supported when they got to parade through the entire town and the streets were lined and people were cheering and it was the middle of a pandemic. Like people didn't know if, you know, if, if stuff still lasted on surfaces for 15 hours or what have you. And these kids, they still talk about it to this day. The one thing that they want, they, they said, you know, if you ever do it again, <laughs> was to allow the students to start the parade at their elementary schools. So, it, because they, the parade started at Pier 9, went through town, ended at the high school. At the high school, the parking lot was full of teachers with signs and all these, like the high school teachers, all these great signs and, and cheering on the kids. It was just a phenomenal thing. But again, like you say, you know, we go through the entire district. It's K-12 to, to and I volunteer to help with this anytime. Um, but to have a parade that starts at the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. So those teachers who had an impact on these kids too, like the, the appreciation of the teachers, they get to cheer on the kids and the kids get to, you know, thank them and then go to the middle school and then to the high school, you know, so, but those kids still talk about how much of an impact that's, you know, and during it, we're like, it's a parade. What's the big right. deal? Mm -hmm. It really resonates with them and it stays with them, yep. especially during this crazy time. Yeah. So. Anything that um, circles back or closes that loop of like, you know, you were a part of this community, but yeah. everybody was a part. I mean, like one of the things that I have done since I've been here is the destination day where right. the kids are going. Fantastic, right? yeah. But what I do is I send it out to the entire district staff. I don't just send it to the high school staff. High school staff gets to see that. They get to see the culmination. They get to see them graduate. But the elementary teachers were tying their shoes, and now they see them as a young man or young woman, and they were a part of it. But everybody was. The, the cafeteria worker was, a custodial worker, a security guard. That's why I send it district-wide staff, because everybody was a part of that success. And they should be celebrated because of it. So for me, doing so, an idea like that, I mean, that's, that's easy. And I know that the kid, if the kids are into it, easy, easy to do. And I think that's something that we can talk to them about. But yeah, and anything like that is great. So absolutely. Yeah, and thank you yep. so much for your, your enthusiasm. And I know you don't sleep. Um, <laughs> I, I've seen well, you at the high school. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old, so yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> so. in addition to that. Yeah. But, I, you know, I the district it. is really, really lucky to have you and have somebody so enthusiastic and so you know, person who can really reach out to everybody, not just students, but staff, everybody. And that's a really great resource. And, Thank you. and it's, we Appreciate did a good job hiring you. <laughs> Thank you. Joe, I, I thank you so much on behalf of the board um, for what you continue to do, your enthusiasm, um, and for your leadership, for what you're uh, helping the staff in, in this district to do. So thank you so much, and we appreciate, appreciate you being it. with us tonight. Thank you. It's easy when you have good people working around you, great board, great community. So it, honestly, I mean that genuinely, like everybody that I've spoken to and that, you know, when I want to do something or an initiative, I have backing, and that's, that's huge. So if I can start with that, you know, it, it's in a good spot. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank Thanks. you.
Okay, next we're gonna go to um, committee updates. Teresa, will S N Nina, you, do, you don't have anything to read. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Um, I was just gonna mention the, uh, the New York State School Boards Association. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you so much, that's right. And we do thank Nina for being there forever because she was not able to be at our last board meeting. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Nina. And so, Nina, yes, your report. Thank you so much. Um, so, I just wanted to say that um, it's it, it's always, I really enjoy doing it. It's it's always very interesting to see what it is that the school boards association is getting behind. And you know, there were submissions from various, um, both from the board of directors and from various uh, school districts. But it was it was very interesting. Um, I think out of uh, there were 17 proposals that had come across that were from, um, that had been already supported by the resolutions committee. And then there were another eight that were by districts, but they didn't go through um, the committee. And 17 resolutions were adopted. So um, it was one from one of those districts and then everything that the resolutions committee had put forth was supported except for one resolution which um, it seemed from the discussion, people really felt it was it was about making certain that districts were green, um, you know, that they were really promoting more, um, you know, low carbon based energy projects and that sort of thing. But there was there was another one that that got more um, more support, but that one was actually uh, the feeling was that it really wasn't the primary goal the way it was written. It almost made, made it look like it was a primary goal for a district rather than an ancillary goal. And it was defeated by, by I think, um, a margin of 55% because of that. But overall, um, very you know good resolutions. I'm, I don't wanna go, I could go into detail <laughs> on individual ones, but I'm afraid I might put everybody to sleep. But um, it's, it's great to see this group that lobbies to get things approved really get together and, and have a, a robust discussion around these topics. And we appreciate your efforts in representing us at, at the NISBA convention also. Thank you so much. Teresa. Yes, uh, policy committee. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> po the policy committee met and um, we went over several, quite a few policies. Uh, there'll be some that'll be released uh, at our next meeting, some that can be approved the same night because they're required, and others that will, the board will have an opportunity to see a second time. Um, and because of the previous uh, committee chairperson and the previous members, my job is very, very easy. So it's uh, policy is in excellent condition, and, and right now we're just updating as we go along. So thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Larry. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys. Making me look good. That's it. Thank you, Teresa. Jim, anything? No, I know. I just... <laughs> Brendan got... <laughs> Brendan got... <laughs> just working. <laughs> Uh, the, the communication committee met on Thursday, the 21st. Um, we discussed uh, one of our, our larger objectives, which is to have a series of informal community outreach sessions uh, over the next month or so, month, two months. So we uh, to, together we developed over a dozen or identified over a dozen groups that we can approach. Think, you know, American Legion, sports groups, things like that for, again, these would be small committee member, board member, just have listening sessions, let's call them, uh, distinct from our community forums, which are more structured, district there to really provide information and answer questions. Uh, Margaret has started up a, uh, a group spreadsheet to organize all of the, the leads on that, get dates set up. So that is uh, very well off and running. We even have some, uh, some early responses, the Chamber of Commerce. So things are, uh, things are really moving forward there. We also, uh, f uh, in the in the days since that meeting, uh, we've gotten the website up and running. We're adding content to that, uh, in which includes the facility committee uh, update schedules, things like that. And we're also we've scheduled the first community forum, as I referenced earlier, which is nine days from tonight, so a week from this Wednesday, November tenth. 
tentatively scheduled at the middle school, uh, and we'll we'll confirm that uh, in the next coming uh, days. And there's a lot going on, but I think that's probably the best we can uh, solidly share right now. Can you email us the website and the tentative dates so we can put those on our calendars? Yes. The so the the website is uh, a tab on the current website. It's, it's on now. Yeah, so it's the 2022 capital project, yeah. Okay, thank you. I need to plug that. Mm -hmm. When did you say the next forum is? Was that November, no, Wednesday, November the 10th? The 9th, right. No, right. The, no 10th. the 10th. The 10th. Okay, great, thanks. The 10th. <laughs> Wasn't a plug. <laughs> That's right. Do you want to? Any update on the scholarship? Oh, uh, sure. So, scholarship committee. Uh, uh, the update is Margaret is reaching out to the uh, Community Foundation of Orange and Sullivan to potentially lower the threshold in which their the minimum balance that, that it needs to be maintained um, to to just help us maybe get it out of Harvey's hands and and, and get it something that can uh, you know some vehicle that can be you know maybe earn earn a little more for us or for for the for the you know the investment. Otherwise. Um, Harvey's able to take checks whenever you're, whenever you're ready. Just Thanks. to add to that, I have a call scheduled with her tomorrow. They have given us the approval to have a lower starting amount. Right. Normally they say you need a basis of $5,000 to start the account. They're, they're giving us a break on that, um, and we're going to talk tomorrow morning about details, who okay. to write the checks, when to get them in so they can start investing, all that kind of stuff. So a so follow-up, then maybe, maybe if you organize that, we can reconvene the committee? To get together to review with all the you know all the information and then you know maybe potentially propose something moving forward. Great, thank you. Nancy, quick mm -hmm. question, Brian. It, are we covering things like the local library and things like that? That's on the list of those outreach events. It is. Yeah. And, and do we leave any written material closer to the? We to the are. Vote? I left that off. We're we're discussing creating postcards that would link. We'll have some very basic uh, information and then link to uh, the website just to, to hand out. I don't want to. No, no. I, I don't want, I haven't spoken about, I haven't confirmed whether, you know, we can actually fund that. We want to make sure that we're not just spending too much too early in this process. But no, we're, at least, we're at least reaching out for events and then going to figure that, out what we can leave curious. behind, basically. As it gets closer, like the. Center for Dis the outdoor yeah. center for discovery and I don't know, even Jones Farms things like that. Yeah, we, okay. we've I mean anecdotally we've spoken to we as in the committee to two Alice's to, to leave information there. So right. piecemeal oh, okay. you get mm -hmm. making our way around. That. Thank you, thank you, Margaret. Do you have any updates for us? I do uh, with the visitation committee. So uh, the four of us, four of us on the committee, wound up going to all the different schools. We met last week to kind of compile all of the notes that we got. We had a lot of great um, opportunities to see wonderful teachers in action being creative. And, you know, again, a couple of people noted masks were not an issue. It's just the new, the new normal, you know, so that was nice to see. But teachers continue to be creative. They tend to, they're, they're doing whatever they can to abide by the restrictions that exist. And they're modeling even though we heard in you know office hours that a lot of them are feeling the stress, when you're in the classroom watching them, you don't see that, which I think is huge, right? Because the kids are going to go off of what they're what they're being shown. Um, so the next steps that we'd like to do is um, oh the big the big I think the biggest issue that was brought up uh, in all the office hours was how important the tech the Cornwall District Technology Committee is in kind of connecting the technological items that we have that are available to the actual educational needs. So, um, you know, one of the one of the biggest recommendations, I guess, would be to see if we can get those those meetings going again. Because I was on the committee for a while, as was Larry, um, and you could really see, you know, you have the technological side saying these are what we do, and then the educational side saying that's great. This is what we need to be able to do, and it's a nice marriage of the two. So. Um, Overall, that was a, a very big message that we got. What I'd like to do next is um, um, meet with, you know, I know you guys have all this time, but meet with the administration to kind of 
further discuss some of the issues that were that were discussed, um, and then uh, begin scheduling for our. We're, we're really going to try and go for each quarter this year because we weren't able to go last year, so that's a process. So we'll start working on that and seeing what we can do. But really, really informative. It's great to be. This is one of the best committees I think on the entire board because you actually get to go in and see. Brendan said, you know, you send your kid to school, you don't know what's going on. This committee, I suggest everybody at some point during your tenure that you become part of this committee because it is just, it's phenomenal to see. And when you hear, you know, people say, oh, Cornwall is such a great district. And the, it really, really is. These teachers are just, and not only just the teachers, the support staff, the, the friendliness that's in the hallways, you know, and just the, the feeling of really community and family is just beyond, you know, what I see even on the college level where I teach. So it's, it's nice to know that we have that structure. Margaret, Margaret, would you like me to help you set up the meeting with BOCES? Yeah, what we're going to do too <laughs> is uh, because it's another great thing to know how the BOCES portion of the district runs of up the community. So yes, please, that would be wonderful, Larry. Okay. And we'll do that, and that will be for the entire, that won't just be for the committee, that will be for the entire board because the this, this resources that are there, again, for our students, absolutely phenomenal. Okay. So that would be great, Larry. Thank you. Team effort, thank you so much. <laughs> John, any updates for us? Thanks, Nancy. So the audit committee met Thursday the 28th. Um, we reviewed the uh, proposals from two uh, audit firms to provide internal audit services for the district. After some deliberation, we were able to come to the board and recommend um, Nugent and Hausler. That's before the board's consideration tonight. And um, I thank everyone. You think you have the best committee. Uh -huh. I think the audit committee is the best committee. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh -huh. The one time where Teresa's microphone is on. <laughs> point that That's out. okay. It was meant to be heard. That's I knew like, it would work. That's like an Irish whisper, as my grandmother would have said. John, John, thank you, and thank you to the committee. I'm a little confused, though. I don't remember seeing anything out that we were that there was an audit committee meeting that date. Mm, I think there was. Um, was it, it was on scheduled. The it was. I know we talked about it at the last the meeting website? that board had. Um, it was on. Okay, it was yeah. on the I think website. It was on the site. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Okay. But, like the okay. first of October, like I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, just we yeah. have to. I didn't notice it on the website. Please make sure that it yeah. does go on the website because that's legal notification, not just an out yeah. for any committee that has to. It, it needs. That's a good to, point. That, we make a lot of assumptions. We'll we'll go look at what's on the website and okay. provide some feedback. I guess. Okay. Thank time. you. I appreciate that. And Larry. That's right. All right. The uh, facilities committee met on October twenty sixth. Um, uh, one of the. Topics was roofs and the complete roof scan is ongoing. Um, little wrinkle due to new SED building codes requirements, additional structural supports may be required for existing roofing systems because uh, the more insulation you put in, the less snow that melts, and the less snow that melts, the more snow that stays, and the more snow that stays, the heavier it is. So uh, that might be an issue we don't know yet. Um, Plumbing, an uh, ongoing uh, effort district-wide. Specific attention will be paid to verify the fixture count per location meets code. Um, water remediation at uh, Willow Avenue. Uh, Tetratech is looking into receiving area at Willow to mitigate water infiltration into the electrical room um, as to maximize the aid for the proposed remedy. Um, the district office, uh, multiple roofing solution samples were presented. Uh, pricing is scheduled to be gathered on those solutions and presented on the next meeting. It was noted the DO is not on a historic building registry. <laughs> Buildings and grounds, um, there was an open discussion took place relative to installing a four bay garage to store various large pieces of equipment. Um, Cornwall Middle School, uh, Tetra Tech site and traffic engineer studied both the morning and afternoon drop-off uh, via um, drone. Uh, input from the group was requested and a wealth of feedback was provided. Um, based on this feedback, design ideas and preliminary costs will be shared at our next meeting. Athletics dialogue began uh, about the concept of a new multi-sport stadium. 
It's the recommendation of Tetratech that we reserve some portion of our next two meetings to resolve the stadium pro proposed location to a final cost, and so a final cost analysis can be provided. The uh, BOE Communication Committee will assist in procuring community feedback via an upcoming community forum, as was just mentioned. Our next meeting is uh, November 9th at 6.30 in CES gym. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And thank you to all the, com the committees, chairs and members, because everyone is definitely working very, very hard on so many different things for this district. So I, I can't thank this board enough for all of that. Um, the next thing is on the agenda is the cons is the consent agenda. Use of the consent agenda permits the board to make more effective use of its time by adopting a single motion to cover those relatively routine matters which are included. Um, is there any member of the board that wishes to pull anything out at this time? Okay. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following consent agenda items as submitted by the superintendent of schools, items two through five. Do I have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Thank you. Can I backtrack to a question for Larry for a minute? Go ahead. A minute? <laughs> I guess just thinking. Bye, just a quick question. You know, at, at my age, we're forgetful. It's, it's just part of it, part of what I get to excuse myself for. Um, Larry, on the high school roof, flat roof, is is there any time that we would, uh, any of you, obviously, I hear just because of what we were discussing, the, the, the idea of looking into solar panels? Um, but, I mean, I know that flat roofs were an issue at one time, but they're not anymore, especially if you're going to be working on that roof, because there was a, a long time where with the, you had a flat roof, you, you just couldn't do anything with it, with solar, and that has changed over the years. We haven't talked about it recently. The last time we talked about it, our, our roofs weren't structurally yeah. sound enough mm -hmm. to, to do that. Um, I will bring it up at the at the next meeting. I'm though. curious, mainly for the high school, because obviously we have older buildings, but the high school is 15, right. 16 years old. The, the, but the, the 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 because the codes have changed um, significantly, it may, it may it doesn't matter that no. the building's only 20 years old. No, and I, I understand that. I'm just looking at the way solar is working for other right. commercial properties these days that are older. Uh, and the fact that it's a flat roof usually, you know, just completely I'll, put I'll, it out of the question. But now that's changing. I'll bring it up rapidly. Sure. No okay. problem. Thank you. Harry, did you? Oh, okay. 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 Um, we're up to our second opportunity for anyone who would care to speak from the public. Um, anyone wishes to speak, we'd ask you to please um, step up to the microphone, state your name, and we would ask you to please limit your remarks to three minutes. Anyone wishing to speak at this time? Okay. Well, we are ready to adjourn our meeting. Do you have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carried. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone who came this evening as well. <laughs>